God bless anime, man. It gave us Pokemon and Sailor Moon, Totoro and Akira, and most importantly for my purposes, some of the strangest monsters on screen. Western cartoons are starting to catch up. Right here, sweetie, I'm a pickle! But anime still remains the primary adult-oriented form of animation, and the things you can do with it are weird. Animation allows you to ignore things that can get in the way of filmmaking, like real-world physics or technological restrictions, and that opens the doors to all sorts of freaky stuff including the reason I'm here today. Attack on Titan has an almost ridiculously simple premise. In the world of the show, human beings have been relegated to living in a single huge city surrounded by massive walls. Why? Because for unknown reasons, every now and then humanity is visited and decimated by these guys called Titans. To try and stave off extinction, our obligatory teenage heroes join the military, devoting themselves to fighting the Titans and solving the mystery of where they came from. Japan has an interesting history with monsters. Its folklore features some truly bizarre creatures, the descendants of which still appear in a lot of Japanese film. But it also contributed one of the most important species of monster to film, the kaiju. Literally translated as strange beast or something to that effect, this is the giant thing that pops out of nowhere and destroys everything for no reason. Maybe Godzilla will get his own video someday, but for now the most important thing to know about him is that as the world's most famous kaiju, he's usually seen as a reaction to atomic annihilation, of which Japan is currently and hopefully will always be the only victim. The atomic bomb meant that for the first time in human history, warfare didn't have a human face. It was something that could be conducted from a distance. Massive amounts of human death caused by an indifferent, non-human force. Something like that can't help but affect a culture. And Godzilla is one of the ways Japan as a society responded to the trauma of the bomb. So then what trauma is Attack on Titan alluding to? There are some theories out there, not all of them flattering to the show. China, for example, is so convinced that the show is Japanese military propaganda that they've banned it entirely. Others see Attack on Titan as encouraging nationalism and militarism in general. The most clearly written argument I've found for this is by a writer named Ruben Ferdinand, whose article I'll link to in the description of this video. Essentially, Ruben thinks Attack on Titan is very good at producing an instinctive sense of all sorts of strong, aggressive emotions. Revulsion, horror, anger, fear, excitement, power, etc. And that that's not necessarily a good thing. As he says, we can ideologically frame these dehumanized monsters as enemies of mankind without feeling too bad about their expiration or being too concerned with their motivations. Titans embody no political message, nor do they hold any agency. They are a canvas on which a faceless antagonism can be smeared and heroic sacrifice can be made. It is a narrative device that is both the cause and the excuse for nationalism, or worse. He goes on to clarify what he sees as the danger in this. Fascist ideology places the nation before the individual by formulating the nation as being under constant outside threat. The only way to deal with this threat is to exterminate it. The threat, of course, is always inhuman and vulgar, subjects so deeply obscene doing all things that are morally repugnant they become impossible to empathize with. This becomes an excuse for policies of never-ending invasions and territorial conquest. Any military action gets the rhetorical justification that it ensures the nation's safety because it promises that the nation will go on. So basically the argument is that the Titans are representative of a faceless, inhuman invader whose horrible actions justify not only a hugely militarized society, but also a deep sense of exclusionary nationalism, the kind often exhibited by fascists. Okay, so I don't think this is necessarily a bad or invalid argument, but I do think it's an argument that more or less ignores the most interesting aspects of this show, chief among which is the design of the Titans themselves. Ugh. They're unsettling just to look at, but before we dig into why, let's go over what little the show tells us about them. We know, first of all, that Titans are stupid to an almost vegetative degree. A titan with speech capabilities is basically unheard of. They can't be reasoned with or intimidated. In fact, they barely seem aware of their own existence. Their only purpose is to eat people, which they do with neither malice nor excitement. But even that purpose doesn't amount to much motivation. See, titans don't need to eat people. They have no digestive tracts, and once their bellies are too full, they just barf up a nasty mass of gore and keep eating. 
This is important because it keeps the Titans from being an enemy as we understand the word within a military context. Ruben Ferdinand is kind of right, the show does encourage us to hate and fear the Titans, but when it comes to war propaganda, there's a big difference between a bad motivation and no motivation at all. Back in middle school, you probably learned about the categories of narrative conflict, which have been a thing since ancient Greece. There are usually four, man against man, man against nature, man against self, and man against society. War stories are a man against man conflict. Even when the enemy is a faceless mass and the motivation as basic as I want to conquer planet Earth, it's still a battle of ideology. Attack on Titan, on the other hand, usually operates more as a man against nature conflict. The show can't encourage us to dismiss the Titans' motivations because the Titans have no motivation to speak of. That's not a militaristic projection of mine, it's a fact of the show. The Titans are as indifferent to the human suffering they cause as an earthquake or a hurricane. And here's where cognitive dissonance, arguably the source of all horror, creeps in. Because even though Titans aren't capable of ideology, they still look inescapably and disturbingly like people. In fact, their size means that compared with the human character's anime stylization, the Titans sometimes look more like people than the actual people. Monster design isn't arbitrary. Attack on Titan wouldn't be the same show if the monsters were zombies or aliens or robots, so what's the effect of having these monsters look like magnified, distorted human beings? Speaking for myself, the effect is an uncomfortable sense of recognition. In making these monsters look like people, but removing any human agency, we're forced to consider the idea that the human form and meaningless violence are intrinsically linked. How much of yourself do you see in their faces? Or the way they mindlessly destroy things and people like a child unknowingly abusing a mouse. It's true, the civilization that springs up in response to the threat of the Titans is heavily militarized. But what does military life in Attack on Titan look like behind all the cool action and spiffy technology? Pretty bleak is what it looks like to me. Among soldier and civilian alike, the overwhelming preoccupation of everyone in this show is a good death as people who are perpetually on the losing side of a never-ending battle, a useful, glorious death that helped the cause is perhaps the best thing anyone can hope for in this situation. And yeah, that attitude of craving to give your life for your country just asks to be taken advantage of by immoral systems of government. But there's a caveat to this, and it's that no matter how much a character tries to pursue this good death, it never comes. For anybody. The most dignified death in Attack on Titan is still always going to be as a terrified snack for this grinning, misshapen giant who isn't even capable of acknowledging the life it's grinding between its teeth. It used to be that philosophers expected war to just kind of disappear with the progress of society. But instead of dwindling as society has become more advanced, war has just gotten more destructive over the past hundred years. Why do we do this to ourselves? What are we trying to achieve as a species that makes any of this bloodshed worth it? When I watch this show, I don't especially feel a sense of glory or honor watching anybody fight the Titans. Mostly it just makes me feel kind of small and scared. And I think that's how I'm supposed to feel. That's certainly how the soldiers behave. Those who aren't killed, including the requisite anime badasses, are never offered the comfort of believing their friends died for any good reason, a fact the show reminds you of again and again and again. The Titans were actually one of my motivations for making this channel in the first place. This show is one of the few war narratives I've seen that unequivocally states a fact that in no way benefits proponents of war. That there is no such thing as a good, violent death. The Titans aren't a straw man. Like any good monster, they're a mirror. There's a quote by Professor Jeffrey Jerome Cohen that I always think about when I'm researching this stuff. Monsters are our children. They can be pushed to the farthest margins of geography and discourse, hidden away at the edges of the world and in the forbidden recesses of our mind, but they always return. And when they come back, they bring not just a fuller knowledge of our place in history and the history of knowing our place, but they bear self-knowledge, human knowledge, and a discourse all the more sacred because it arises from the outside. Monsters ask us how we perceive the world, and how we have misinterpreted what we have attempted to place. They ask us why we have created them. Attack on Titan is very slow to reveal any information about where the Titans came from, but gradually it becomes clear that the origin of the Titans is, of course, people. 
human beings are responsible for the creatures that are threatening civilization for reasons that haven't mattered for a long time, if they ever did. I don't know if I can think of a better metaphor for this curse of perpetual mass violence we've brought upon ourselves than a mindless, giant human that consumes every person it meets with a smile on its stupid face, not because it has to, or even because it wants to, but just because it can. Throughout the series, the Titans ask one question, as much of the audience as of the humans fighting them. Why did you make me?